Hey there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to enable customer and user reviews on your Webflow site, like this, through the SuperSparks app. The best part of this solution is that you can customize the review section and form in the Webflow designer instead of embedding a widget with limited design flexibility. As you can see, a Webflow user was able to create a fully functioning Goodreads clone with this solution. And just in case any Amazon lawyers are watching this, I do not know who made this. This solution is also integrated with Member Stack and Webflow's Memberships tool. So as you can see, when a logged in member leaves a review, data from their account like name and profile image get displayed on their reviews. So this is not only great for adding reviews to e-commerce product pages, but also creating a reviews-based community like Goodreads, Rotten Tomatoes, or Rate Your Music. Did I also mention that this solution is 100% no code and should only take two minutes to implement? Don't believe me? Well, start the timer. Okay, the first step is to sign up to SuperSparks if you haven't done so already, which you can find a link to in the description. And afterwards, we're going to be redirected to an authorization screen. So we're just going to select the site that we want to add reviews to and click Authorize App. Then the first step is to go to SuperSparks and click Add Sparks on the project we just authorized. Then we're going to select e-commerce and CMS reviews and click the call to action below. And afterwards, for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to select CMS or static pages and click proceed. Then after clicking proceed, we will see a collection of styled and unstyled templates to help speed up the installation process, including the Goodreads clone that we saw earlier in this video. But to change things up, I'm going to select the hims and hers clone, and then I'm just going to click copy template. And then I'm going to go back to my Webflow project and select the CMS page template for movies. So this is a movie reviews site in this example. And then I'm just going to paste the template that I just copied from SuperSparks. And then I'm just going to click proceed with the installation. And then as you can see, we've jumped ahead a few steps in the installation, and that's because these two steps are pre-installed with the template that we selected. Then the second last step is to copy this code snippet and go back to your Webflow projects into the page settings for the CMS template, and then we're just going to paste this code snippet into the head of the page settings and click Save. Then the last step is to publish these changes and then we can see our reviews section in action. So first off, I'm just going to write a review as a guest. And as you can see, there is an animation here for the star rating input, which is enabled through Webflow's interactions feature. Um, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to give it three stars and then I'm just going to input my name and email address. Um, and then I am just going to write my review. So enthusiastic. Okay, now <laughs> when I click post review, you'll see that the review gets posted immediately without the user needing to refresh the page. Now, every aspect of the review section and reviews form are fully customizable in the Webflow designer. Um, so if we just take a look at the form, which is being revealed through a pop-up interaction, you can actually change the images for the filled and unfilled star icons in the rating input. And then on the review section, we can also do the same thing. So I'm actually just going to change the unfilled star icon in the review card. And then if we publish again and take a look at the new published version, you'll see that the new unfilled star image is visible. 
And also the amount of filled and unfilled stars created on this review card is based on the star rating the user gave for this review and also the denominator. And one other important detail worth noting is that you can always moderate your reviews and content by going to the manage reviews overview inside of the super sparks editor. So for this example, I'm just going to delete the first review that I posted. And then if we go back to super sparks, as you can see, we now have two reviews and refresh the page. You'll see that that review that we deleted is no longer visible on this page. And also the average rating has been recalculated. So there you have it. We've now enabled reviews on our website, but this is just the most basic form where only guests can review. But what about setting up member reviews through MemberStack or Webflow memberships? Well, let me show you that along with a few other tips and tricks. Now for enabling Webflow's free memberships tool, if we go to the extra function step, you'll see that there are a few extra functions that weren't included with the template and some that were. Um, but the one we're interested in is the membership fields extra function. Now the first step for enabling member reviews is to go to the settings and there are a bunch of other review settings that I encourage you to look through. But the one we're interested in is the memberships tool setting. And we're just going to select Webflow memberships as our tool and click save. And once the settings are saved, the next step is to go back to the extra functions and the membership fields extra function. Then with Webflow memberships, the author name will always be the default name field in the account settings, which is essentially the full name of the user. But if we wanted to add custom fields like username and profile image, and these are the only two right now available in SuperSparks, we are just going to make the slugs of these fields inside the Webflow member settings identical to the ones in SuperSparks. So if we just take a look at this account that I'm going to comment from in Webflow memberships, you'll see my full name, which would be displayed on the name element from the template, profile image, and username. And in case it's not clear, username is more like the author name you would see on a site like Reddit. Now, since a username element was not pre-installed with the template we selected, I am just going to add a new text element to the review card. And then I am just going to style this a little bit, make it blue and give it a bit of a margin. And then I'm just going to add a base class. Then I'm going to go back to SuperSparks and the username extra function and just copy the username class and go back to Webflow and add it to the element we just created as a combo class. Then the steps are to copy this slug ID and then go back to the user account settings in Webflow. Then we're going to click on the settings for the username custom field and replace the current slug with the one that we just copied to our clipboard and click save. And then on Webflow, I'm going to copy the slug ID for profile images and go back to the user account settings, this time for the custom settings for the profile images file field. And then I'm just going to replace the current slug with the one we just copied. Now the name and email inputs on this template form are more for guest reviews, but since the name and email are automatically collected whenever a logged in user reviews, they don't need to waste their time inputting this. So if you wanted both guest and member reviews, I highly recommend using Webflow's user account visibility setting and just setting each element to only show when user is logged out. 
Now let's test this out. So first off, I'm just going to log in and let's fast forward through this. And since I'm logged in, these inputs are no longer visible when I open up the form. So I can just simply leave a review without needing to input name or email. And when I post my review, the name, profile image, and username from my account gets automatically displayed on my review. Now on to MemberStack. The first step for MemberStack is to go to our settings and select MemberStack as our membership tool. And if we go to the membership fields extra function, there are two custom field inputs. One is for name, so the actual name of the user, and the other is for username. So in case you skipped ahead to this part of the video, uh, be sure to check out the username section where we implemented the username extra function. Um, okay, so if we go to this example in MemberStack, there are two custom fields, one for username and another for full name. So first off, let's go to the full name field and copy the ID and go back to SuperSparks and paste the custom ID into the first input field and then click save. Then for the username, we are just going to follow the same steps. So first go to the username, custom field and member stack, copy the ID, go back to SuperSparks, paste it into the text field and click save. And if your users are able to upload profile images through MemberStack, you don't need to paste the custom field into SuperSparks. The image will automatically be displayed in the image element from the template. Similar to what we did for Webflow memberships, if we wanted to enable guest and member reviews, and also considering that the name and email data is automatically collected from logged in users, we can hide these input fields from the form from logged in members. Here is a resource from MemberStack with more info on how to do this, which I will provide a link to in the description. But basically, you are just going to need to paste this attribute here to all of the elements you want to hide from logged in members. Okay, now let's leave a review as a logged in member. Now, if I open the review form, you will see that the name and email inputs are hidden. And if I just leave my review, then all of the data from the name, username, and avatar custom fields are dynamically displayed on my reviews from my account. One additional detail worth noting is that you might notice that whenever the page was loaded in these examples, the designer placeholder elements flicker very briefly. Now this might only be a problem for pages where the reviews are in the first few frames of the page, but to remove this flickering, go to the grid with the Super Sparks class on it and decrease the opacity to 0% and publish, and you will see that flickering is no more. And yeah, that pretty much sums it up. There are, of course, a bunch of other settings and features that I encourage you to explore with the SuperSparks app, such as adding replies to create discussions around reviews or allow store owners to reply to reviews. And there's many more new features to come. So let me know in the comments what type of project you are building and adding reviews to. And if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe for more Webflow tips, tricks, and insights. Thanks for watching and take care.